I can hear the rumble, bold as distant thunder as a hundred tons of steel roars down the track. Train comes round, the horse should turn, headlights beam, then it storms into the station with a rush of steam. All aboard as we climb inside, and we know that we're It was well known in the town of San Luis Obispo that the Holden family loved trains. Every afternoon, when they heard the train whistle, they would stop their chores to watch the Daylight Limited thunder along the tracks. Mr. and Mrs. Holden would wave at the engineer. Tuck and Billy would chase the sleek orange engine until they fell down exhausted. Chief wagged his tail so hard that it looked like his backside was going to fall off. There's something about a train that makes a person feel alive, Mr. Holden would say. One night, Tuck had a dream that he was riding in a train car made of glass. I saw mountains and sky all around me, he told his family. It was like being in a huge moving window. Mr. Holden always listened carefully to his children. I think you've got an idea there, son, he said. Mrs. Holden, who had an artistic flair, drew a picture of Tuck's dream train car. It had a great domed roof made of glass and comfortable chairs where a person could watch the world whiz by. Mr. Holden, who loved to tinker in his workshop, studied his wife's picture. I'm going to build that, he said. Mr. Holden spent many days and nights constructing a perfect model. Tuck helped, asking questions and offering ideas. Let's call it the Tucker, he suggested. Oh, well, that's not fair, said Billy. I want a train car named after me, too. How about the chief, said Tuck. Chief wagged his tail heartily. <laughs> Too late, said Mr. Holden. There already is a train called the chief. I think we should call it the dome car, Mrs. Holden said suddenly. She had a way of getting to the heart of the matter. When the model of the dome car was finished, it was like a real train car in every way. The wheels turned and the doors opened. The windows arched up to the sky inside were chairs that swiveled. There was even a cord that the crew could pull to sound whistle signals. Two short blasts to go forward, four short blasts to break. Tuck and his father proudly showed their invention to the engineer of the Daylight Limited. <laughs> a train made of glass, the engineer chuckled. He held his sides and laughed so hard he popped a button off of his overalls. Mrs. Fernandez, who worked at the ticket window, didn't laugh. Instead, she showed Tuck and Mr. Holden a poster on the station wall. It said, Visit the Invention of Tomorrow contest, June 26, 1939, at the New York World's Fair. You should take your invention to the World's Fair, she suggested. It's the place for big ideas. The Invention of Tomorrow, said Tuck, his eyes shining with excitement. That's perfect. We'll win the contest, and then everyone will know about our dome car. We'll be famous. Tuck, you must be dreaming, Mr. Holden said. This is America, Mrs. Fernandez smiled. Everyone is entitled to dream. The Holdens took a vote. It was five to zero in favor of entering the contest. This is fine and dandy, pointed out Mr. Holden, but New York is all the way across the country. How will we pay for the tickets? I'll sell my comic books and catcher's mitt, said Tuck. I'll sell my gold locket, said Billy. I have a few dollars I've been saving for a rainy day, said Mrs. Holden. There was still only enough money to buy two tickets. It was agreed that Tuck, Billy, and Chief would stay behind with Cousin Ida. Mr. and Mrs. Holden would ride the Daylight Limited to San Francisco, where they would pick up the Overland route to New York. At the station, the family stood silently waiting for the train. From a distance, they heard four short blasts of the whistle. They all knew what that meant. The Daylight Limited was putting on the brakes and coming into town. Mr. Holden took Tuck and Billy in his arms. I want you both to remember something, he said. No matter how far away your mother and I are, we'll always be 
just on the other side of that whistle. Mr. Holden gave his children a long hug. Mrs. Holden blew kisses. Billy and Tug did not stop waving until the train was out of sight. Cousin Ida arrived that day. She wore sensible shoes and had a rule for everything. She made Brussels sprouts for dinner and put starch in the sheets. She insisted on baths and would not allow whispering after the lights were out. Cousin Ida had no use for fun. When Chief brought her his rubber ball to toss, she locked it in a drawer and said, Who does he think I am? Babe Ruth? Tuck checked off each day on the calendar. The invention of tomorrow contest was five days away. Oh, if only we could be there, Billy sighed. Outside, Tuck and Billy could hear the Daylight Limited approaching. The sound of the whistle made them think of their mother and father. They knew that somewhere on their way to New York City, their parents were thinking of them, too. <laughs> 